All right, guys, so I finally got this out of the mold. Uh, there was a few mistakes that I made while I was doing this. So I want to go ahead and tell you about them because, I mean, they're pretty obvious if you've ever messed with this stuff before. I never have, so it's a learning curve, I guess. I should have done a little more research into it before I started. Uh, the first one being that I poured it too thick. I ended up doing a 3 by 3 by 4 inch block all in one setting. Uh, they recommend only doing an eighth inch uh, thick at a time. I didn't realize that until after I'd already poured it. <laughs> so if I'd have done this in two or three different settings, it probably would have done a lot better. But it, it did end up overheating and it cracked up here for the heat to escape. So uh, we went ahead and I went ahead and filled it in, hoping that went deep enough to actually fill that crack all the way through there. And I'm hoping it won't come apart on me as I'm trying to turn it. Uh, We'll find out whenever we're doing it. The second one was that I kind of got in a hurry putting this mold together because I had a little bit of a time crunch trying to get this together because I knew it took three days for it to fully cure. So uh, I didn't take the time to coat the inside of the mold to keep it from sticking so bad. So it took a little while to get this out of the mold. I ended up using a hammer and screwdriver and broke the plywood apart because it was stuck so well onto here. And then I ended up using this plane right here uh, to uh, get it all nice and smooth on most of the sides. That way I can put it on the uh, on the miter saw and cut these two sides here nice and flush. I wanted to do that because I wasn't sure which side I was gonna use for, uh, I'm gonna glue this to a glue block and I wanted a nice flat surface. And I wasn't sure which side I wanted to go with. The cracks further on this side, so I'm probably gonna end up gluing this side just in case that breaks off. Hopefully I'll have a pretty good chunk over here that I can still work with. So, yeah, so the game plan now is just to glue it onto a glue block. We'll let it set up for a little while, and then we'll start turning it and just kind of see how it goes. All right, guys, I've got my glue block put on here now, and I've got it set up pretty close here, so that way I can get it on there fairly square. Fairly square. Now, I've already went ahead and test fitted it and put some lines on here for a good reference to make sure it's fairly straight. So I'll just place this on here. And then I'll be able to put my glue on there and then slowly bring it up where it looks pretty close. I've also got my uh, guard up here, or my tool rest, I apologize. Uh, so that way I can kind of eyeball how straight it is as well. All right, that's not probably, it's probably not perfect, but it's pretty close. So we're gonna go ahead and run some glue around this as well. I'll make sure and get a pretty good amount of glue on here to make sure it's gonna hold really well. All right, I got it glued up now, so I'm probably gonna be using a mix of traditional style tools and the carbide tools. I'm not sure what's going to work better. I've seen people use both. So uh, I'm probably going to start with the carbide tools to get these edges down because I know they're sharper. So that way I know, since I've got that crack that I am a little worried about, I don't want uh, my traditional tools to end up getting a catch and it breaking it. So I'm going to use, I'm going to go ahead and start rounding it off with the uh, round carbide tool just to, like I said, that's sharper and I'll take smaller little chunks out of it and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and start doing that real quick.
All right, guys, I've got this pretty close to the shape that I want it to be, but as you can see, there's quite a few holes in this because the uh, one, this actually had a bunch of holes in the wood itself. I don't have a pressure pot or anything, so that's why I've got some holes that showed up in the resin itself here in several places. And uh, so I could leave them like that and make it look kind of rustic like I do with a lot of worm holes and stuff like that because I think it looks really nice on some of the wood that I do. But I think I want to make this a little bit smoother at least. So I'm going to go ahead and fill these in with some CA glue and, a, uh, and some of these brass shavings I've got here. I've got these from my local hardware store. Uh, I went to the place where they cut the keys and I just asked them for the brass shavings and they just gave them to me for at no cost. So that was pretty nice. So I think that's going to be a pretty cool contrasting color to this blue and the wood color here. So that's my game plan. I'm going to put a, I'm going to rough it up on the inside of these here. And then I'm going to put a little coat of CA glue, fill it up with these brass shavings here, and then put some more over the top to make sure that the CA glue is all throughout the uh, brass shavings to make it a good solid piece. Uh, so I'm going to do that to probably at least the bigger holes. I may not do it to all the little holes. I'm not entirely sure yet. But uh, I'm definitely going to do it to the big holes here. It'll be a cool contrast in color and it'll help smooth all this out pretty good. So let's go ahead and start doing that now. Alright guys, well that's the end of part two. Everything's all sanded and it's ready to put a coat of finish on it. So be sure and come back next time so you can see the, fun, the finished product. Uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you like this type of content. And uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite part of it is. And we'll see you next time.